Hi, it's Geeske aka Gigi from Aardekracht aka Earth Power and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about your tarot birth card and before we jump into that uh, subject I wanted to give you a quick update. Um, last Friday my son tested positive for COVID uh, and um, he has been vaccinated, so he didn't have uh, a lot of symptoms, only a little bit of nose problems. That was all. And I uh, completely um, thought that I was going to get COVID as well, but I didn't get it and my husband uh, neither. So we're all good here. Uh, I have not been able to ship orders in a, uh, a few days, but uh, I have reopened my Etsy shop and my other shop uh, today. So um, we're all good and uh, it seems like COVID is silently disappearing from my family again. So that's great. Um, so let's jump into the subject of the video and that is your tarot birth card. So I'm starting this new tag, hashtag my tarot birth card. And um, in this video I want to talk to you about my birth cards and uh, the way you um, get to your birth card is by adding all the numbers in your birthday. Uh, so mine is 19 December 1980. So I uh, added all the numbers and then my first birth card is death. So I have chosen the light seas tarot and star tarot and um, it's a double digit number. So if you get a double digit number that is um, below the 22 mark uh, that is one card and you can add those numbers so death is 13 so one and three makes four so my second birth card is the emperor so i chose again the light seers and the star tarot so those are my birth cards and uh i figured this out uh about a year ago or two years ago and I uh, was um, not surprised. Uh, I first I thought I had only um, the Emperor card, but uh, later I found out that I also have the Death card. And um, well, the Death card is not one of the most positive ones in the deck. <laughs> so at first I wasn't all too happy about it, but. Um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense because uh, in my life I have struggled a lot with depression and also with suicidal thoughts and uh, those began when I was 20 years, 21 years old um, and I was in France to uh, do a semester uh, abroad for my uh, study in French literature and um, uh, yeah, it was the most difficult period in my life. Um, I got really, really sick. When I was there, I got the real flu, so not a common cold. I got the real flu. Um, I was having a fever. I was uh, delirious. Uh, I couldn't breathe properly, so it, it does remind me of the symptoms of COVID when uh, I had that flu. So I was really, really sick. And the, uh, um, the city I was in was not a very safe city. I was in uh, one of the um, outskirts of the city and uh, I felt very, very unsafe. Uh, there were men running around in the streets uh, calling me names. Um, uh, I had a few uh, uh, unsafe encounters with men mostly. And uh, so I didn't feel good at all when I was in France. 
So I uh, called my parents and I said, uh, this is not going to work for me. I'm really ill and I don't feel safe. Uh, I didn't really tell them about the unsafety, but um, I tried to try to make myself clear that I was in an unsafe situation and I wanted to leave. Um, they didn't understand how bad it was, so they thought I was overreacting and I needed to stay there. I couldn't come home. I didn't have a home to return to because I couldn't go to my uh, parents' house and um, my brother was living in my apartment at the time. So I couldn't return and then I had this vision of myself when I was feeling so so bad of myself um, tumbling through a dark uh, dark deep void and um, that, that was how the depression was uh, presenting itself to me in my head and I prayed for help. I was a Christian at that time, so I prayed for help from God and Jesus. And uh, of course I didn't receive any help. And I heard this voice coming from within me saying, no, you need to do it yourself. And that was not what I wanted to hear at all. <laughs> so my ego was uh, really, really crushed at that time and I um, lost all hope, I lost all faith in a greater power than myself and I thought I need to do it myself so what can I do? So that was the first time I was in a deep depression. It was the most uh, difficult time. I have had other depressive episodes since then. One of them was as deep as that one, that was about six years ago. And again, I, I felt that I needed to get out of it myself. I need to do it myself. And uh, so I have struggled a lot with um, death and also life. What is the meaning of life? Um, and I have found out that my meaning of life is that I can still love and I can still make it myself, even though the world doesn't seem to love me, or um, yeah, the, the world seems a bit loveless. I can still love and I can still choose to love, and that is my meaning of life. And then we, we're getting to the emperor part. This uh, emperor is... Um, about structure, uh, order, authority, um, and I see it like, okay, um, things didn't seem to work for me at all, I was in deep trouble, and uh, the emperor inside myself, so the archetype inside myself, has to build a new foundation and I had to build a new life for myself, one that felt solid, um, a life where I can follow my own authority, make my own rules, uh, and uh, I had to do that myself, so I am the emperor as well. And um, yeah, uh, my routine, my daily routine and my spiritual practice is really, really important to me to stay healthy. So I have a self-care routine that I follow every day um, that keeps me uh, balanced and healthy. I still struggle with depression every now and again. It uh, usually comes in the form of chronic fatigue. Um, that, that comes in waves, so I have periods where I feel uh, good about myself and my life and I have energy and I have periods where I feel a um, little bit depressed and mainly very exhausted. Um, I have to say that getting up in the morning is still um, a difficult task for me. 
but I managed to get up every day and um, uh, I follow my self-care routine and during the day I start to feel better and better about myself and my life so my routine and uh, the structure in my life has proven to be very very uh, important so that is the way in, in which the cards show up in my life and uh, in the star tarot in the uh, guidebook you get um, the descriptions of your birth card uh, in and what it means for your life in the guidebook in the back of it and um, Kathy McClellan says that people who have the death card in their uh, as their birth card um, learn to live with change and transformation and um, I thought that was funny because when I was younger I was definitely uh, not <laughs> someone who handled uh, change well. I was following the rules pretty strictly. I followed what other people said I should do. But uh, during my life and all those depressive episodes, I've learned to be a lot more flexible with life and um, what happens in my life. So I yeah i have been uh, i have become a lot more flexible and um, i can deal with change and transformation a whole lot better but that is because i have a daily routine that i can uh, hold on to and that is my, like my safety uh, vest is that a right word safety my safety net you know what i mean so um, that is the way my birth cards um, have shown up in my life. Uh, this is, by the way, my favorite death card of all time. I love the way it represents the universe inside yourself. Sorry. <laughs> the universe inside yourself. And you all have it within you and you can all... You can do, do everything from within I, I love that so I challenge you to talk about your birth cards um, in a VR if you like uh, I um, uh, I know that this is a very personal subject so I dare you to make a VR <laughs> if you do please let me know in the comments below and give this a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel for more creative spirituality and then i would love to see you in the next video bye